Ahmed Taha says, Hey, Kian and Om, what is your complete honest opinion on Paul Pogba joining us next summer if he does, including salary, current fit, future fit, profile, and etc.? So, I forgot when his contract ends. That Would he come this on summer. free if that was the case? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I've, I've thought about this then, and coming on a free... And I know that would mean there's still agent fees and, you know, he can demand like a really good salary and stuff. But it's still, I mean, it's a free. It's still better than having to pay a lot of money from him, which Manchester United would demand and they could. On a free, it's just too good for me. And I know it, it's kind of like final years of his prime. But looking at the midfield, looking at Modric aging out and how we continue to rely on him, I mean, he's just too good. He's just too good, and I think he he slots in really well, you know, next to, for example, Kroos, Kamavinga. He adds that element of, like, creativity and playmaking higher up that a lot of our midfielders don't really have except Luka Modric, and Kroos could, but we, we've played him in a withdrawn role for quite a while now. And I think, I mean, he's just, he's a magical player. And when he can play in, in a freer role, higher up the pitch, which we'd be able to do with the personnel that we have, I mean, he adds a lot. He really does. He's an exceptional player. And if you can get him on a free and just have to negotiate wages and stuff like that, I, I'd go for it. I don't see why you wouldn't. Um, you know, if we had to pay like $65 million or something, I'd probably step back and be like, okay, let me consider his age. Let me think about it. But put him on like a three-, four-year contract and just see that out and be like, okay, this is Pogba's career at Real Madrid. I'll take it. I agree. Um, I, I have a bit of a confession to make. And uh, I just, I feel like I'm, yeah, like this is a legitimate sin that I'm just confessing and I, and I deeply regret. I remember a while ago, do you remember that question we had? You, Matt, and I had a question. I don't know what, what podcast it was. Maybe it was like f- close to a year ago. And someone asked us who was the most overrated and underrated players in the world. And we asked the underrated one. And I, I just blanked on the overrated one. And I didn't know what else to say. And I, what popped into my head, and I felt terrible saying it, was I said Pogba. And, uh, I remember that. I, I really went after you for that. <laughs> I, I was deeply wrong about that take. And it wasn't even a take because I just... I, the overrated question was always has always been kind of difficult for me to answer. And I haven't... I hadn't watched much of Pogba at Manchester United when I answered that question and I and I, and I kind of went through a, a, a quick narrative that just popped into my head to answer the question. And uh, I every time I've watched him play, especially for France... I mean, at this point, I watched the French national team much more than I watched Manchester United, to be honest. Uh, but I come away thoroughly impressed and uh, with a deep appreciation about what he can actually do on the football field. And so that aside, I just wanted to get that off my chest because I felt guilty about it ever since. But if I'm like, I feel like the timeline with Pogba fits now more than it did in previous years. Like I remember when he first went to Manchester United from Juve and Gabe and Josh were on the podcast regularly at that point. And they were like, you have to sign him. He's, he's generational. He's so good. And at that time, I pushed back against it, not because he wasn't talented, but because we had Moritz and Cruz who were just perfect together. We were doing so much. And I just didn't, I struggled to see where Pogba would fit. And they were like, well, look, you just put him in the defensive midfielder slot and you're good to go. And I, I, I struggled to see that part of it. I, did, I was like, you're not getting the best out of him. Why sign him at that point? You're not going to bench Mordecai Cruz. You can't bench Pablo. What are you going to do? It just felt like a too much of a shoehorn, like sign everyone like we did with the original Galacticos and you just try to make it work. And, you know, I was still so scarred from, you know, doing that with Beckham and Makaleli, etc. I just didn't see the fit. Now you fast forward and I'm, I, I, you know, with Mordecai being phased out slowly, you know, with Cruz getting older, although he's still pretty damn young, you know, but, you know, whether it's with injuries and rest and you don't want to run him into the ground, plus you miss some of that creative output if you're benching Modric more and, and you miss Kroos' vertical passing so much when he's not in the team. I feel like the timeline fits now 
And I don't know exactly what the pairing would be what with Kamavinga and Fede and Cruz and how that would work, but I feel like now it makes more sense. Um, I just don't know. Like, I know people will say Cruz, but like I, I, t- I tweeted this after, the, I think it was the France-Belgium game, where it's like, I don't think there's anyone better in the world at hitting that ball over the top of a defense from deep. Like that through ball that perfectly weighted the angled pass over long distance. And Cruz is the obvious one. But I, I just feel like what, the way Pogba can just pick it up really quickly and hit it over the top over a long distance is so incredible to me. And just having that asset in the team, and especially with Modric not, you know, being, not being as prevalent as he once was, I feel like would be invaluable. Now, like in terms of the, the salary, Om, we can get into it a little bit. Um, he is making an absurd amount of money. You know, if you look at Manchester United, it's still like a tier below the Ronaldo, De Gea, Sancho tier. But still, he'd immediately walk in and be making like, he'd be one of the, the highest earners, especially with Ramos gone. Um, so he'd be starting to make somewhere between like Bale and Hazard type of money if he came. Because I don't I don't imagine you'd be able to make, to pay him any less with Raiola as his agent negotiating. That's just my feeling. Um, so it'd be a ton of money, but you know Bale's contract is coming up the books, and so is Isco and Marcelo. I mean, Marcelo is a big one, not not crazy, but he's big enough. Isco is like people say like oh, Isco's contract is coming up the books, and that's true. Isco's not making like that much money. It's not like a crazy amount. I mean, it's a lot of money compared to me. He's making like six million euros more than me per year, <laughs> which gives you an idea of what my salary is. But like. I think um, we keep on hearing, oh, like, these guys are coming off the books. You got to learn, like, who are we going to allocate it to ultimately? Because we have all of these free agent names that are coming into the mix. And it's not like you can sh- you can sign, like, three, four, or five players with these three salaries coming off the books. It's really the only big one is Bale. Um, and and, I, and Isco's not going to get paid much. At this point in his career, he kind of like because he's been years now. He's just been kind of kind of floating through. His value has not been boosted, so I I don't know where he's going to get his money. But from a salary perspective, it it it'll work out in that sense where you have players coming off the books. But I I'm totally open to Pogba signing, um, more so than I was in previous years, I guess. Yeah, not not much to add. Just that I was kind of in the same boat as you. I remember that entire Pogba debate. I think we had like a, a little Slack channel debate that we then turned into an article, and it just yeah, I mean, it just wasn't the right time. And it's interesting how I felt like more Madrid fans were pro Pogba then, and then became less pro Pogba over time when it became I think more and more suitable for him to come. I'm not quite sure what the temperature of the fan base is right now. I assume it's a little more positive than kind of in, you know, the prime Mourinho days where Pogba's stock was at its lowest. But I don't know. Maybe there are Madrid fans against it. But I think this is kind of the opportune time. And if we can make it work out, I think it would be really, really beneficial for us. 